So if you recall, we introduced a quantity called displacement. What was the displacement? The change in the position vector. So we have two displacement vectors to consider for A and B. So let's do the calculation for A, which was final vector, final position minus initial. Ah, oh, but it turns out this was a vector subtraction. How do we going to approach it? We trick into thinking as a sum. And we could just draw our vectors. So let's see what it looks like. Let's take D1A. That's a really long one here. And D initial A. That was the shorter one. But now we need to show this going in the opposite direction. And we still need to attach them head to tail. Right, because D1A was going this way, so the opposite is in the other way. I exaggerated a bit, I apologize. But the displacement vector then is going to be from the tail of the first to the head of the last. That's our displacement vector, delta DA. Which makes sense, right? Because look, the displacement of the cheetah is to the right by how much? That length, oh, I was a bit off, but you get the idea. It was to the right with this much distance apart. Ah, so that's good. So that means that tree A measures a displacement from 0 to 1 of this much quantity to the right. So let's see if we can agree with the friend B, our tree B. Now the calculation is going to be displacement for B. Final position of B minus initial position of B. How do we approach it? We think of it like addition D1B plus negative D initial B. Okay, so let's practice drawing it up. Very easy. Wow, physics, all you have to do is draw stuff. That's kind of cool, right? Like uh, you have an equation, but now you're drawing. Not so bad. Okay, so how are we going to take care of this displacement? We're going to add them together because we did a trick. So D1B, that's the small one here. Okay, I know it's a bit confusing on the image. So that's the shorter one. D1B. We're going to attach it head to tail, but the initial B is in the opposite direction. So let's draw what that looks like. It's a really long one. This is minus the initial B. And the resultant is the head of the, I mean, the, sorry, the tail of the first to the head of the second one. So this is D delta DB. Again, how can we check that it makes sense? Well, it should be pointing to the right and approximately the distance that the cheetah covered. Wow, that one came out really good. So you see, although we have two different coordinate systems with different position vectors, they're not so helpful because people are going to have different values depending on the origin, depending on the coordinate system. But what these two friends can now agree on is A, for sure the cheetah has moved some distance to the right. So from both points of view, we were able to measure the displacement, which was to the right with that amount of distance. So that is our solution to the problem we had before. So our displacement vector is independent of the coordinate system. And it gives us the change in position. So again, So it's independent of the coordinate system. And what was the second idea? It gives us the change in the object position. So the formula, this is the first equation that we learned in physics. The displacement is the final position 
minus the initial position vector. And in order to do that, we have to introduce vector addition, scalar multiplication, and vector subtraction. So this is a lot to take in. Physics is quite tough, but I'm trying to mix it in with calculus, because normally students learn vectors and calculus, but we're trying to learn it together in physics. So please keep in mind you can watch more videos, and I'm going to show you with more examples how to use vectors with physics. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.